we end where we started. And if you're sitting there going, huh? What do you mean, where we started? We didn't start with the original True Grit. No, we did not. But this whole trip for me did start when I, you know, I did the original True Grit and then I did the remake a right afterwards. That's when I started. So, yeah, it's kind of like I started with a True Grit, ended with a True Grit in a way. Yes, so I just recently did the review for the original True Grit from 1969. It was my first watch through the entire thing. And while I liked it, I had some issues, namely the pacing. Felt like they meandered too much throughout the film, which they also do here. It's based on a book, so they do take, you know, things from the book. But this movie is 110 minutes long. The other one was 127 minutes long. That's 17 minutes difference. This movie is shorter and has a better pacing. You know. Um, so, would I say this is better than the original? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's John Wayne. John Wayne was the man, the Duke, the legend. But, this was actually pretty good. I, I did like it. It goes through the same kind of, it runs through the same story elements. You know, Tom Chaney killed Maddie's dad. Now you got it. She wants revenge. She signs up. Uh, Rooster Cogburn, which they keep, they only call him Marshall Cogburn in this. They don't really say Rooster. Rooster Cogburn, they help her track him down. And then you have the other one, the, the U.S. Marshal the Beef, Texas Marshal the Beef, who is Matt Damon in this movie. And, you know, they work together, they don't work together. And then it eventually ends with them eventually finding them at the end of the movie. So, yeah. But this one does have differences in it. Like, for instance, we don't ever see her dad. Like, we don't see his dad. We don't actually see Chaney until his appearance towards the end of the film. Remember, like I said in the original, we said in the beginning, we don't see him again until towards the end of the film when she finds him by the stream. That is the first time we see him. That's right. We see... Tom Cheney less in this one than we did in the original. And it's Josh freaking Brolin. Thanos. Cable. Jonah Hex. Maybe not that last one. But he's he's underutilized in this. Likewise is the great Barry Pepper who plays Ned. Ned Pepper. Now Robert Duvall who played Ned Pepper in the original was also underutilized. And it's equal here too. It's about the same. We don't see them until towards the end of the film. We still get the same kind of stuff with Maddie. She's more she seems now where Kim Darby was I, she was it's weird. Kim Darby was older than Haley Steinfeld was when she shot the movie. See, Kim Darby was 22 and Haley Steinfeld was actually a child. She was like 13 or 14. She was actually of the age. So it was different. Which is also awkward when you have Matt Damon giving her spankings later. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the difference in the beef in this one. I, I didn't really particularly care for the beef. <clears throat> you know. But, she in the original, she seemed more childlike, strangely enough. And here, she seems more adult-like, more stern, more determined. And I kind of like it better. I, I said in my original review that Kim Darby was a little bit annoying. I think she's better here. Uh, Le Beef, played by Matt Damon. Um, I didn't particularly care for his character. They made him more stern, too. And, it, you know, like I said, he gives her a spanking, which prompts Rooster Cogburn to cock his pistol at him. She said, you're not going to let him do that, are you? No, I don't think I am. And then he's like, oh. but like, I think they did a thing with him where it's like a change of heart type of situation where he's mean, he's gruff, and then by the end he becomes an ally and a friend, and then they just leave him there. 
They don't even know what happened to her. Like, yeah, because at the end... We'll get to that, I guess. Uh, they kind of go for the same ending here. In this version, she shoots... Cheney. She shoots Cheney, and the recoil of the of the of the rifle knocks her into the snake pit, and she gets bit. She's taken out, and Rooster takes her on the horse and rides on out of there, and leaves the beef behind, saying he'll come back for her. And it's it's kind of a sad ending too. Uh, but I don't want to talk about the ending yet, because that's later. But anyway. So the beef in this one is stern and becomes more and more, and he does apologize for what he did and all that, becomes more friendly. Where in the original, he's just a friendly guy. A nice guy, a little bit oh, in over his head. You know, Glenn Campbell, great for that kind of a role, but they changed their Matt Damon here. Don't take it to care for this version. Care for that version. Then there's Rooster Cogburn himself. Original, played by John Wayne. And here... Played by a very mumbly Jeff Bridges. Now, I get it. He's supposed to be a drunk. But was Jeff Bridges actually drunk? You know, method actors sometimes, they get, you know, you know, I, you cannot tell me he wasn't actually high during the Big Lebowski. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, that's just like your opinion, man. No, but. Uh, what we get from him you that's really I mean if I didn't have the subtitles on I wouldn't know what the hell he was saying I'm serious <clears throat> I'm serious it's it, it just it's hard to understand you cannot come with me and that's what it is. And at one point, it feels like Josh Brolin is competing to be like, because you got you got Jeff Bridges. Hey, what you get to do, Brittany? And then you got Josh Brolin. How are you doing? One you're going, and then when you're the Addy new girl, you know. Sometimes, like sometimes you can understand that sometimes. When he starts yelling or something, he's like, rah, 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 rah. I'm like, I mean, there's a point where Matt Damon's character, the beef bites out of his tongue. Did they both bite out their tongues? And now they're just, rah, 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 rah. I don't know. It's like a mumbling contest. I don't know. That doesn't, strangely enough, doesn't affect their, their performances. You can tell from their acting what they're trying to convey, especially with Jeff Bridges, who's a great actor, but it just, I don't know, it's, maybe him and Sam Elliott should have a, a mumble off, you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, he still has a good performance. Strangely enough, he's good. You know, and I, I briefly mentioned Barry Pepper for the part that he has. He's good. There's also some dude who's just like a bear. I don't know why. He just is. It's a Coen Brothers movie. You gotta have something weird in it. Right? Surprised it wasn't John Turturro as Jesus going, you got him on. You know, I don't know. I, I know this is, hold on. But this. <clears throat> yeah. I also like the look. The original was of the time, it was 1969, but it was also very bright in color. But this one, a little dark and dingy. And strangely enough, more Western like. I think more of what it would have been like back in those days as a verse to what they put on the film, you know? And I think that's what this version represents, is what it would have been like, rough. And I guess to that point, the, beef, the version of the beef in here does fit with that, but it just, I just, I just didn't like you to start, when you start a wailing on, you know, whipping your bottom, I'm like, eh. 
You can do that in a movie now. Especially if she was actually underage. It's kind of weird. You know? <clears throat> but the ending. The ending is what great differs greatly. I remember the original, right? This become, this has become an original versus remake thing, but we'll just fine. Uh, in the original, remember, she gets bitten by the snake and is taken back into town. And then, I don't know if they, I remember if they did the horse thing in that one or not. But, I can't remember. It was just last week. Anyway, he's back into town, and then he meets her at her family's burial grounds or whatever, and says that when he dies, he's going to be buried there. Then the movie ends. Here, they go for a bit of a more kind of downer, somber ending, where uh, she survives. Like, he grabs her, puts her on the horse, and then go as far as they can before the horse you know, tires out, and then he has to shoot the horse, then he tries to carry as far as he can, and he can't quite get there, so he fires his gun as someone else come out there and to help them, and then by the time that she, by the way, it's narrated by her as an, an older version of her, you know, they're going for like a 40-year-old version of her, and I didn't know, first I'm like, why didn't you just get Kim Darby to narrate it? She's still alive. I think she was. But, like, I didn't realize she was going to show up at the end. And she does. Hey, the actress they got to play her looks very much like a grown-up Haley Steinfeld. So, kudos on them. But when she wakes up, he's gone. And then, um, she gets a note from him later. She, she Her arm gets amputated. She only has one arm now. She grows up. She never got married. She never had any kids. Nothing. She grew up bitter because of the revenge, I guess. I don't know. She's she's cowboy bat girl. I, I don't know. I don't know. But um, yeah. She finally, you know, he he sends her a thing. He's performing with, with this traveling circus or something. And when she shows up, she finds out that he passed away three days before she got there. And then the movie ends with her just walking into the distance. There is music playing, but I almost feel like you take the music out and just have her walking and the noise, noise of her walking would be darker, would be more kind of somber for this kind of ending. I actually kind of like this ending better than the original. It's kind of sad. And it makes more sense than just a ending. She does have his body moved to her to the her family's burial plot. But in the original, she's like, and when you die, you can be buried here. And I was like, okay. Here, in this version, there's more of a personal connection. Because he kept pushing her away and pushing her away, and by the end, it became he became more of a father figure. Where and in the original, it kind of was like that, but like there was nothing big. Now, you could you could say they could have taken some liberties and had him die trying to save her, then him being buried in her in her family's burial plot would make a lot more sense. You know what I mean? But <clears throat> it works here. And I'm going to say this is pretty, 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 pretty good. I enjoyed this. It might even be better than the original. This is only the second Coen Brothers movie I've watched. I have Oh Brother, We're Out, though, but I haven't ever really watched the whole thing through. Th yeah, this is good. I enjoyed it a lot. Kind of better than the original. Sorry, Duke. But, yeah, I, I didn't expect it to be better. I, was like, oh. I remember when I first saw the trailer, I was like, really? They're remaking this of all the movies to remake the classic, like True Grit, and then now I'm sitting here eating my words because it, it kind of was better. So, yeah. And that brings us to the end of Remake Thon. Thank Lord. Okay. Whew. So, what are your thoughts on True Grit from 2010? If you want to help us out, you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.